this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Um, in the last video I actually discussed three plants to repot. Um, one because it's unknown and the other two because they're in moss. So this as usual is part one, let's get them out of the pot and see if we've actually got any roots. <laughs> and then the um, next part will be um, sorting out a mix and potting them up. But I'm hoping part one's not going to be very long. Now this is Restrepia um, capria, um, but it's got hybrid in brackets, which probably means one of the parents is definitely capria and the other parent is unknown. That's the probability of how it can end up like that. Right, this is very wet because it actually got watered this morning. Now Restrepias have very fine roots. Now this has come from Burnham's and this is a mix of moss and perlite and it has been potted at Burnham's, I can tell. There's no plug in the middle, nothing like that. However, that smells like freshly wetted moss, so it doesn't smell like it's going off or anything like that. Um, it probably could have stayed in this pot for some considerable time, but I just don't like having plants in moss anymore because I I find it very easy to overwater with moss. It's as simple as that. Um, I'm just getting the worst of this out to make sure we have got live roots, which we have. There's plenty of them as well. So we'll get this washed under the tap to get the rest of it off. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's not bad. That'll wash up reasonably clean. And then we'll start afresh with a new mix. Um, to say this is uh, this is quite a nice plant. This one, um, Restrepias don't tend to have deep root systems, um, but this one's got plenty of new growths on it. Um, one, two, three, four, five. There's six. I'm not quite sure why that one's bent over, but that's the way it's grown. So plenty of new growths on that one. That one's going to be fine. Pop that in the sink for a minute. We get the other one out. So this is going to be wet as well because again it got watered. And again, this has come from Burnham's, and this is Restrepia sanguini. You could say sanguini, but the fact that G U I N E A spells guinea, if you put S A N on the front, I'm going to pronounce that sanguini. And it's got A in quotes on the end of it as though that's a variety name. And I have seen quite a few at Burnham's like that, where they just get a letter on the end. And I keep meaning to ask Sarah how that comes about, and I still haven't got round to it, so I don't know. <laughs> but it must be some sort of system, you know, some sort of filing system when, um, you know, you produce seedlings, basically, and um, you get one that's a bit exceptional. Now it may be that that's a variety name that they've given it in the nursery and it doesn't go any further. In other words, it's not necessarily registered. It's just a notational point that they keep in the nursery um, that this one was a particular, particularly good one. And if they're gonna produce some more from seed, that would be a good one to go in at the front end because it was you know, it had an exceptional bloom or a deeper colour or something was good about it over and above the rest of the seedlings. So it could be something like that. But I'm guessing, you know, I mean, but I keep meaning to ask Sarah about the uh, letters on the end. I've got another um, Restrepia that I've had quite a long time from Burnham's that has a letter in quotes on the end of it. Um, I must remember to ask why, how that happens. See, now this is plenty big enough. This would actually split into three plants easily. But I'm going to keep it as one. Keep it as one. And let it grow on. The bigger the plant, the more chance you've got of it being in bloom permanently. Because the different parts of the plant will be pushing out new growths at, at different points in time. Good root system again. Again, very, very fine. It's just a matter of washing out the worst of this moss. And 
ferns and weeds and anything else I come across. So that's that one done. Now the one that's a worry. This is Miltoniopsis venus, which is actually Vexillaria crossed with Phalaenopsis. So two of them, it's a primary cross, two of the species Miltoniopsis, two of the five. <laughs> and this will come out as a lump, I suspect. Right. This is odd. This looks like this has been potted up in large bark. That's unusual for a Miltoniopsis. It hasn't got brilliant roots, but it has got some. And I'm going to treat this with kid gloves, so we're not going to hoik all this bark out and damage any of these roots. I will run it under the tap and see what falls off. But we do have some failing roots here, but we do have some good ones. So it's just a matter of uh, letting the tap do the work. We've even got signs of some new roots. No sign of any rotting at the base. So that's good. These, these are capable of rotting at the base quite easily. Um, right. And what we do have, which I hadn't noticed, is um, we do have a new growth coming. These are a strange plant because where they would normally be growing sort of montane forest, they've got ridiculously high humidity and they would never get their roots disturbed. So they don't have to worry about their roots being disturbed. So once they grow a set of roots, they can sit there forever. So when you get a growth that pushes up halfway up the plant like that, where are the roots going to go? They're not going to be able to get out down into whatever this would be growing on. So the chances are a fair few of those are going to be aerial. But in a very humid montane forest with constant airflow of moist air, the aerial roots serve a purpose. However, in our growing environments, it's better if the roots get down into the media. To allow that new growth to get its new, grow new roots into the media, I would have to take that off and that to expose the base of that new growth. But what I tend to do is not take those bits off, but just get my nail in there and split them like that. So there should now be enough room for those roots to push out. Just ease that away. That way the leaves are still attached and can still function, or half of them. So there we go, we have some roots, a rinse and um, pot it up. It's not what I would call a brilliant root system, but um, it is one. And I probably, there's some trimming to do, but not much. So, so there we go, that's those three. And um, what I'll do now is I'll clear this lot up, sort myself out some media and some pots, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. You don't see what goes on in between I'll be back and I'm back. I've actually had a Zoom committee meeting in that gap, so it's not continuous like some of you think. So uh, what was earlier in the afternoon is now very late in the afternoon and heading towards trough time when we eat. And um, that is because it's a warm day and because of what I'm going to eat in a minute, which is not a proper meal at all and I will thoroughly enjoy it. I'm going to have double fried egg and chips and red wine doesn't exactly go with that and tomorrow I've got fish so I thought we'll have some white wine today and then we can finish that off with the fish tomorrow. Oh, sort of okay I suppose. <laughs> um, right, so that, you'll see what that's for in a minute. Um, I've got some stakes in case plants don't steady themselves upright in pots and they need a bit of support and some clips to hold the stakes together as I'll show in a minute if you haven't seen that before. I have an assortment of pots. One size pot is missing and no doubt that will be the one that will be best but if I haven't got it I can't use it. Um, I've got some of my um, cocoa husk into soak. I've got some of the Burnham's medium bark, which to all intents and purposes is small bark. So that will make a nice basic core. 
I also have some charcoal to add in and I have some lumpy stuff, giant lumpy stuff for crocking if I think I need it. Crocking would be used if I haven't got a pot the size I would like and I've had to go one size up. So the pot's a bit bigger than I would like. So by heavily crocking the bottom, I've turned it into a shallow pot. Obviously it's still wider, but it's not as deep. That way it won't stay wet in the area where there might not be any roots. Okay, right, so we've got three to go. We'll start off with the smallest Ristrepia. Roots have washed off quite nicely. Um, there are a couple of dark ones in there that, well, I was going to say, that could be deemed dead. Well, if they just pull off like that, they are. But I'm not too worried. Um, very, very branching root system on Ristrepias. So I'm not too worried if a few dead ones go in there. It's not a big deal. So that'll be the first one to do. Now, now you can get to see what this is for, because the cocoa husk was not sorted and I don't want big pieces. So the idea is that we get a handful out and any big pieces just get taken straight out. So anything that I don't want gets taken out, but it's wet. So <laughs> I don't want a soggy batch. So we just take out the big bits. I just want the nice small, small pieces, some fibery pieces. I'm okay with that. That's fine. But no, no giant pieces because, you know, this is a fine root system. Um, some of the big pieces just break in half anyway. So you just turn them into smaller pieces. And some don't. They rock hard. It varies. That's a hard one. Right. we get another handful out. Have another go. Put that directly on top. And just have a look through, see if there's any big bits. Not too bad out of that handful. See a big piece that's rock hard takes up an awful lot of room in a small pot. Yeah? And the roots can't possibly penetrate it, so they're going to have to go round, aren't they? So you've reduced your root space by having large pieces that are hard. See now these fibrous pieces for a Ristrepia, they're great because, you know, they, they almost represent moss. They have a similarity. Cool, that's rock hard. Right, so we've got a, an assortment in here. No giant pieces now. Some tiny, some fibrous pieces. Some bits of dubious origin. <laughs> right, so that'll do. And then I, I tend to go about half and half with the bark. Something like that. It's not an exact science. And again, if I've got any giant bits of bark in here, they'll come out as well, like that. I think we're okay here. Nice, fine mix that holds plenty of moisture with the cocoa husk, but will always have some air because the bark will stay hard and allow the passage of the air. Just hold it apart, stop it all getting stuck together. Right, now we need some charcoal, but first we need some clean dry hands. Because <laughs> we're going to get dirty. No way around it with the charcoal, it has to happen. We don't have to put charcoal in if you don't want, but um, I've got it now, so some say it doesn't do much good at all, some say it's absolutely great. Some people even grow their plants in charcoal with nothing else and say it works great. So I'm adding some of them. Not, not a huge amount, but some on the grounds that I'm still not absolutely certain that it's the wondrous material that some people say or the waste of time that others say. So, but I'm happy to use it until I see any adverse effects. I mean, I've got the same issue with the um, cocoa husk. I haven't been using it long, but it was highly recommended by some good growers. They said they get great results and the roots grow better. And they, they do well. So you give these things a go until such time as it goes wrong. 
and then if it seems to be that it was the mix then you think about changing it but so far this mix of the small bark the cocoa husk and the charcoal for things with finer root systems that shouldn't dry out completely need to stay moist uh, it seems to be doing okay right as far as the root system is concerned it spreads naturally yeah so it's going to have something up underneath it to force it to spread out rather than do that what I don't want to do is that and bunch it all up together which if you just stand it in a pot and put all the stuff down the outside that's what you end up with in the middle probably with no media in between the roots yeah and you've lost your air basically you know you've trapped the roots in the center and they haven't even got any media around them properly right pot size then I've not a lot of choice really I've got these tiny little ones which that would fit in there but this is a growing plant there's a lot of new growth on there and it's going to push up more new growths and basically it won't stand up if I put it in there so it's going to have to go in the next size up and this is where I was getting to where they're all air cones of different differing types see well, that's not that's not a bad one see that's got a pointed air cone in it so we'll use that one so we'll have some big stuff all around that air cone because I don't you know this is not a big root system and I don't want a soggy bottom to the pot so we'll have some big stuff in there and then we'll have something for the plant to sit on and this is the uh, this is the bit that will be a little bit different because of the type of root system what I'm going to do is spread those roots out over the top of the media I've just put in and I'm going to keep them like that I'm now going to bury them yeah so they're flat at the moment I don't need to try and get material in between them I'm just going to bury them flat so some of them are already at the side of the pot it's difficult because you've got to hold it still and then just gently wiggle it in so that it does go in between the gaps and doesn't leave a flat air space <laughs> instead of a long thin one that you often get you often get a column down the middle of the pot that's just roots and no media at all if you're not careful so that's what I've done I've put those roots in quite flat. Now I will firm that down the outsides, which will catch the ends of some of those roots and push them down and possibly even snap them. But this is a very, very branching root system. It just does. Right, how near to the base of the plant are we? You can get a bit more in, not too much base of the plant on a restrepia just showing not sticking up proud yeah they would be growing naturally in moss and they would be in it not on it if you see what I mean so um, try and get the base of the plant just showing like that and then the roots that come out sideways will still go in the media they haven't got any air to get through to get there and that, I think I, I'm going to support it simply because it's it's a little wobbly. And um, this is the trick with the stakes. I'm not staking the plant as such. I'm not staking anything at the moment using the blunt end, am I? <laughs> Pointy end first. <laughs> that reminds me of a film. What the hell was the film? It was Zorro. Um, and it was a, it was the one with um, Anthony Hopkins, is it? And, um, and and the good guy that was the comedy guy. And he says to him, he says, "Do you know how to use that sword?" And he says, "Yeah, pointy end goes in other person." <laughs> so, that tickled me. Yeah, pointy end goes in other person. <laughs> uh, oh, pushed that a bit hard, didn't I? That actually snap. No, it just slipped. Right, and then the idea is you get some leaves in between the stake, sort of like that, especially some decent sized ones, and you cross the two stakes over like that, 
and then put a clip in them and they will hold the plant. I've got a grabby one here. I've also caught a leaf in there, which I don't want to do. They're not in the best place, actually. I need to pull the plant back. I need more of the plant that side of the stakes so that we've got some either side. Then we push them down, cross them over, and put the clip on the cross. And that just helps stabilize it. So that's one done. I presume we can use the original um, original Burnham's tag, nothing wrong with it. My original Restrapia, the first one I ever bought at Burnham's, that's um, quite a giant plant now, I've still got that original tag. Right, so that's one done, and I, was gonna say, I need somewhere, we've got sun belting in the window, because now we're getting to the time of year where the sun is starting to set a lot sooner and so it drops in the sky a lot sooner, so it floods this kitchen area with sunshine. <laughs> sunshine on a Ristrepia or a Miltoniopsis. It's probably not the best of ideas straight through the glass. So I have to watch where I put plants this time of year. Still a bit of moss there. Oh, it's only a tiny bit. Never mind. So now this time we've got a much bigger root system. This is more extensive and deeper. So this can have a bigger pot and I think I may even go up to that size pot. Let's get a good root system going. Air cone, cover the air cone up but we don't need quite such deep chunky stuff this time round simply because the roots will go down to the bottom of the pot. So in the bottom of the pot we want some media. Now I'm going to see if I can do the same thing again and sit these roots quite flat. Well, I don't think it's going to work so well this time. Nope, I'm going to have to try and wiggle this in between the roots and sort of work it in so that there's no hollow bit in the centre. Come in from one side, push it in towards the middle with the plant held over there. Then turn the pot round and do the same again. Push the plant back against what you've just done and then fill in the gaps on this side, wiggle it in between, so that hopefully there's no real air gaps as such. And a lot of the roots are still pointing towards the edge of the pot, so they're not all in the middle. Some of them are pointing towards the edge of the pot, so they've got media to get into. Ooh, we used up that media a bit quick, didn't we? We can mix some more up for the last one. Hanging out at the top here, see if I can tuck them back in. Right, the plant sat quite near the top, but unfortunately it's too near the top, so I have to mix some more up now. But I do need some more for the last plant anyway, so it's not the end of the world. So we'll try and make allowances for, oh, there's a giant bit. Try and make allowances for, I thought I got all the big bits out. Obviously not. Because <laughs> yeah. we really don't want big bits for the Miltoniopsis. That does need uh, a nice fine mix. Miltoniopsis are one of the few Oncidium types where it doesn't pay to have too much air in the pot. They like their roots in contact throughout, so they're, um, it's quite important to make their media quite compact. Still got to have some air, but not great chunks of it. Um, they like theirs quite tight, but we're not doing that one yet, we're still doing this one. Oh. And I'm reasonably certain that the Miltoniopsis is going to go in one of those tiny pots. See if I can force the roots to grow and then it can be moved on to another one later. So, still got a few bits in there. Right. 
out half and half again. Charcoal. Just, I think, you know, if you have to mix up a second lot, you obviously want, to, want it to be as close as the first lot as possible. All you can do is, unless you're going to use measuring cups, now would those be imperial cups or metric cups? Or would they be the mug you drink your coffee out of? Yes, I am being facetious. <laughs> but some people do actually measure their media quite precisely, and they have a unit that they use. So we'll have like two of those, one of those, and three of those. The item that they use doesn't matter because it still maintains the proportions, you know, so it doesn't really matter what the cup is, so to speak. Could be a jug, not a cup. Could be a pot. Anything will do if you want to be that precise. I go by eye, I just look. And I think that looks about right. Right, now. The plant's leaning, so it needs quite a bit more down this side. And this is loose now. I've, I've done the pushing down the sides. I've got my media quite tight. This is just loose now to help hold the plant. I'm not pushing this down. I want this to sit at the base of the leaves. Just hold them in place. It's a little bit wobbly, but I don't, I don't think it needs staking. It's going to stay wet, um, so I'm not going to be watering it too often. So I'm not going to be picking it up too often. So it should have chance for you know roots to get going. And again, a, a, a wealth of new growths on here, new growths everywhere. So this this is this is growing on nicely at the moment. But there's one dead leaf that is really annoying me, and I want it off. Just trying to find the base of it. It'd be just my luck to cut a new one off, wouldn't it? Oh, would you believe it? It's actually got two new leaves growing out in the form of a kiki on that brownie coloured leaf, so the leaf gets to stay. This one, however, is coming off because it's been chewed. Now, I hope that was done before I got it. That's a slug or a snail, that one. Right, so there we go, that's that one done. Where did I put the other one? Oh, up there, out of the sun. So that was the um, Restrepia sanguinea. Right, and the last one is the Miltoniopsis. With its new growth slightly exposed now, so that if it does produce roots soon, which it will, um, they'll go straight into some media. Right. Will this really go in one of those tiny pots? Yes, it will. Well, if it will, it will. <laughs> it's going in there. So most of the roots about halfway down the pot, I suspect. I will have to tuck these in, and I will have to stake the plant because it won't stay upright. But I'm tucking these in gently. So I need them all in the pot, I don't want them. You can end up sometimes, if you're not careful when you're using a very small pot, that some of the root tips aren't pointing down into the pot, they're pointing upwards. And they will grow upwards and poke out into the air and then they're not doing their job properly. So you've got to go careful and make sure that they do go in. And I've got to get the media in between these roots very, very gently without breaking them with any luck because they are brittle. Quite brittle. And again, not too much air. Mm, a little bit doesn't matter that much, but not too much. We want quite a bit of this air shut out so that the media is actually touching. No sort of big gaps. Nicely compacted, but still maintaining some air. Very, very difficult without pressing down and breaking the roots. And 
How firm is that? That's not bad. It's not bad. It's going to get two stakes, one each side again. Just need some small bits down there. Selected pieces now. <laughs> And again, base of the plant just touching, not buried. Don't bury the base of Miltonia bulbs. So many of the ones that come from the, you know, big nurseries, mass producer types, where the media is halfway up the bulb. And if it's not good quality media, it's going to break down, it'll take the roots out, and because the roots have started to rot in the media, that rot will come up into the base of the bulb and then you've lost your pseudo bulb as well as your roots. So don't bury the bulbs, they should just sit on the surface really. It's not so bad with this cocoa husk because the, um, the pieces on the very top of the pot dry incredibly quickly. So the bulbs wouldn't be in soggy media because that top part dries really fast. Right, that's it, that's all it's getting. Where's my tag? Again, I'll keep the same tag. It's actually quite an elaborate tag on this one. So, Miltoniopsis venus, um, Vexillaria crossed with Phalaenopsis, and then you get a description of the bloom. Well, I can't read it. Quite pink flowers with a yellow mask and wine red waterfall. Minimum 12 degrees. And you could go down a bit lower than that, but <laughs> probably best not to. So that's the three of them done. And I've got some leftover media here that I'm going to leave. I usually clear up completely, but I'm actually going to leave that in there and leave all this paraphernalia over on the side there because I do have another pot to do. And it seems daft clearing all this up to do another pot tomorrow. I probably won't film that one. Um, too many repotting videos can become tedious. Because um, even though it might be different plants each time, the actual procedure is not that different really. Pots together. They can be put away, and the charcoal can be put away. So, um, so I'm just clearing up enough so that I can get these. Am I going to stake that? No, I don't need to. Just move the pot, move the plant. If the pot moves with the plant, then it's not wobbly, is it? So, and don't put it in the sun. That sun's creeping round. I put these plants out of the sun. It's nearly there already, so I need to move the plants. So I don't do anything else. Right, let's just get them back and we'll have a quick look then. We've got our large restrepia. Um, there should be some of the roots showing. Yes, there's a few showing. So they're there and they will fan out nicely. Must not dry out. Um, the cocoa husk and the bark mix tends to dry out quite quickly when it's new. Seems to be, seems to be that the cocoa husk takes a while before it's sort of like broken in and stays wet. At first it just seems to dry really really quickly. And then we've got our other one, Restrepia cupria, which is a hybrid of unknown other half basically. So cupria is obviously one and the other one's unknown. And then we've got our uh, primary cross, Miltoniopsis primary cross. So uh, the um, Vexillaria is not having a dramatic effect on this apart from one thing the number of leaves. Vexillaria has a, a ridiculous am amount of leaves per, per um, pseudobulb um, in excess of what you would normally expect. The Phalaenopsis is also a miniature and the Vexillaria is quite a large plant. The combination of the two is quite a small plant so far anyway. <laughs> could still be a young plant and when I brought it home with its bloom that was probably its first bloom so right so there we go that's three more done and um, not many more to go now we're getting there see you next time